Okay, so I've started recording. Today, it will be one of those lessons where I do most of the talking and, and you listen, but it will be a nice overview of most of the things that we have talked about. Uh, more specifically, it has to do with debating. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, attended the event, but there was a debate between teachers and students. Uh, I was part of the teacher's team. I was actually the first speaker. It's my favorite role for, for a couple of reasons, actually. Uh, and I'm, I was quite uh, satisfied with how my speech turned out. So that I, I decided that we would have another look at it uh, and that we would disassemble it in a way. I would tell you what are the, some of the things that I did and uh, I will ask you whether you recognize them and whether you'd be able to, to do that on your own as well. So let me share my screen. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, here it is. Uh, it's it's been posted on our uh, Yaki Kemal uh, channel on YouTube. You can watch it whenever you want to. And the motion was teachers versus students. Oh, I mean, this is not the, the the motion. This is the event teachers versus students debate. And the motion was social media is good for society. Uh, I was the first speaker of the negative team, which means that there was another speaker before me, and that was this guy over here, really cool guy, uh, representing the sixth graders. Andre Kalin represented the sixth graders. Elena Farizi, I don't know where she is on the on the screen now. She she was um, a representative of the seventh graders. David over here, really cool guy, the representative of uh, the eighth graders. Uh, there was very fierce competition in the eighth graders, and I have to uh, give a shout out to all the others who uh, who wanted to participate. Uh, among them, uh, Jana, uh, Nicola and Sara, uh, Jana and Sara are here, uh, present over here. And I felt really bad for uh, because they didn't get the chance to, to debate. Uh, hopefully they, they will be able to next time. I mean, I'll give them an advantage for this, for the next round. If there is a, there will be an event like that. Wonderful debaters. It's always a pleasure to work with them. And Teodora over here represented the ninth graders. So uh, <clears throat> I will, uh, I managed to, uh, type my, my speech over here. Uh, be careful. This is not what my notes look like when I was doing the speech. After I finished doing the speech, when I was preparing for the lesson, I wrote it in a Word document. Can you see it over here? Is it there? I don't know if it's being shared or not. Yes, you can see it. Okay. Yes, you can see it. Okay. Yes, you can. So I'll share, the, I'll share the, rec the computer sound now and I'll play my speech. It lasts for exactly four minutes. I want you to pay attention and follow the text over there. Once we finish with that, I will go through every single thing that I did and I thought that I think should be shared with you. So uh, please mute your microphones. I don't want any distractions because it will throw people off. Are we starting? We're starting. So listen. Okay, the first speaker is ready because I'm the first speaker of the negative team. And I'll start the timer now. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, right. Okay. So here we go. Uh, good afternoon, uh, dear judges, all 38 of you, uh, dear teammates and worthy opponents. My name is Teacher Nicola, and I'm the first speaker of the negative team on the motion that social media is good for society. It's important to state that we agree with the initial points provided by the affirmative team. Social media can indeed be beneficial in all those aspects, but at what cost? More progressive thinkers will realize that, unfortunately, social media has started to control every aspect of our life. The websites and applications that were supposed to enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking are being used to uh, send memes and to troll people. Uh, we will try to approach this burning issue from several angles and prove that social media is actually not good for society. I will focus mostly on the deliberate misuse of social media. Our second speaker will focus on the effects on the interpersonal skills. The third speaker will point out the negative habits brought, uh, brought about by social media. And our fourth and final speaker will speak about the effects on the mental health. Um, when we did statistics, uh, uh, when we did research uh, preparing for the, for the debate, we went through some statistics and it turns out that 3 billion people, around 40% of the world's population uses online media. Uh, and I think that one common misconception is that social media can only have a negative effect, uh, can have a negative effect only on children. 
it affects everyone. The problem with social media is that it gives room for anonymity and anonymity gives you courage. And if you don't believe me, just go through your chat log from the last video game you played and think about whether you would say those things in someone's face. This leads me to my first argument, which is cyberbullying. Cyber, uh, bullying existed before cyberbullying, but it was only possible face to face. Uh, now it's possible for people to torment and bully others online. I think that we are all aware that uh, cyberbullying is a very common problem. And it turns out that 25% of teens worldwide are bullied. Um, and 43% are bullied online, which means that that percentage has been doubled. So these bullies use the anonymity that social networks give them, and they use people's trust and then belittle them in front of their peers. For instance, uh, they might take someone's photo from their mutual group then use it to embarrass them online. You never know where the photo will end up. And these online attacks create an intimidating, threatening, hostile educational environment for the students. Not only do they disrupt the education process, but could leave deep mental scars. And how could they not result in that when someone infiltrates their mind, when someone infests their mind, when someone infects their mind, they could be trolled based on their racial, religious, or social background, or simply because someone decided that they, were, they weren't cool enough. Um, information and communication technology has changed rapidly over the past 20 years. Um, and uh, I, I don't think that parents are able to keep pace and there's nothing that they can do to help their children from drowning in the sea of sorrow. The other team, may say that you could prevent all of that by blocking the cyberbullies social media email i don't know but let's be honest you could go live in a cave and uh, things wouldn't change unless we all act together which would take ages to accomplish uh, of course there are other uh, other examples of uh, misuse of social media but i think that this is the most apparent one thank you very much I started speaking with my microphone muted. So by the way, the other people that you can see over here, this is teacher Tsvetanka. She was the second speaker. She did a really good job. Uh, teacher Senada also did a great job. She was the third speaker. And um, we had extra help from a high school teacher, teacher Gordana, who was our fourth and final speaker. Now let's see, uh, let's analyze what I did there and how I used those things. Pay attention, please. So. When I first started, I said, good afternoon, dear judges, all 38 of you, dear teammates and worthy opponents. My name is teacher Nicole, and I'm the first speaker of the negative team on the motion that social media is good for society. Uh, <clears throat> you all know that every speaker needs to introduce themselves and they need to refer to the motion. Uh, and of course, you have to do the greeting first. Now, there are two things why that's so important. First of all, um, it's a polite event. I have gone through this a couple of times, so uh, I'll just say that um, it's uh, polite uh, and um, it's communication on a very high level uh, that, in, uh, that uh, requires that greeting. Second, the reason why it's so important is because it will get you started. Uh, it's very difficult when people need to start with their argument without having formally introduced themselves and the introduction. These two sentences that you say at the beginning give you the initial push for you to start talking because that's the most difficult part. Once you start talking, then things get much easier. Now, moving on to the second part over here. Uh, the first speaker's role involves defining the topic the motion. That's why I really enjoy being the first speaker. I feel like I'm in control. I feel that if I set up the debate nicely by defining it and providing enough context, that my teammates will be able to do a very good job after that. So I feel like um, um, I'm I feel like I'm, I'm in control a bit. You know, I, I, I don't want anything hanging because I think that if someone else was that's my, my usual idea that if someone else was the first speaker, that I wouldn't know how to continue. So the first speaker, re, the role of the first speaker really suits my style. And the roles are an important part, uh, and you need to adapt the role according to your personal unique debating style. It's something that you need to think about very hard and never, ever change roles. 
there are teams which don't take this seriously and they say, okay, for, for this debate, I'll be the first speaker, for the next one, I'll be the second one, and for the final one, I'll be the third one. No, you shouldn't do that. What you should do is just pick one and refine it, make, uh, become a master in that role. So when Andre, who just joined us over here, Andre did a very good job as well. Andre started with, uh, by defining and he listed uh, by defining the motion and he listed some of the advantages of why social media is good for the society. Now, there are a lot of people who don't understand that the debate starts from the very first minute. There are a lot of debaters who are not experienced enough and they wait to hear the arguments. Uh, you, you shouldn't do that. You should pay uh, a lot of attention to how someone defines the topic. Uh, I'll give you another example, not connected to this topic. I imagine if we were talking about the motion zoos should be banned. And if I'm the, the first speaker of the affirmative team, imagine that I define the topic and I say, I, I would like to start with the definition of the motion. We define zoos as prisons for animals in, in, with metal bars. Now, if the first speaker of the negative team doesn't recognize that, it's as if I've already won the debate because I've planted the seed in the judge's mind. He will think of Zeus, zoo, not the god Zeus, Lord of Thunder, but a zoo, like an establishment for animals. He will think of it as a, um, as a prison for animals. So I was being very careful. I was listening very attentively to what Andre was going to say. And I did this. I said, it's important to state that we agree with the initial points provided by the affirmative team. Uh, because this, uh, by th uh, this way, I give him credit, and I'm not pretending that there aren't any good sides uh, for uh, social media. Of course there are. But then I turn, it, um, I turn the situation and I use it for my rebuttal, because I say social media can indeed be beneficial in, in all those uh, aspects, but at what cost? And when I do this, but at what cost? It's a rhetorical question. So I ask a question, but I don't expect anyone to answer it. The, the reason why I do, it, do this is to engage the, 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 re, the listener. I engage the audience, the opponents, the judge, uh, and uh, he knows that when I ask that question that I will answer it myself. I don't want their opinion. So I plant the seed. And then I say, um, this is one of my favorite rebuttals because it, um, it, it, what it does, it, uh, it says that, yes, our opponents are very smart and they know what they're doing. However, we are a bit smarter and we, we will go deeper into the subject matter. So I said, more progressive thinkers will realize that, unfortunately, social media has started to control every aspect of our life. The websites and applications that were supposed to enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking are used to send memes and to troll people. So I turned it around. I said, yes, okay, it could be beneficial for all those things. However, this is what the, what the real problem is. And I was, I was very careful to use words which are very powerful, emotionally charged words. For example, like this word, control. No one likes this word. No one wants to be controlled. So just me mentioning it, it adds up so much to our side. Then, uh, you know that the role of the first speaker is to also do the team split. Um, and uh, I wanted to suggest what my teammates were going to talk about. And let me show you what this means. These were the notes that we took before starting the debate. Uh, we agreed that I was going to talk about cyberbullying and misinformation. Teacher Tsvetanka was going to talk about the negative effect on human relationships and dangerous trends, like the cinnamon challenge, for example. Teacher Senado was going to talk about addiction and the fear of missing out. And Teacher Gordana was going to talk about mental health and individual well-being. Now, I didn't want to give too much away to my opponents, so I was being very smart and I paraphrased these notes. Um, what I'm trying to say is that I didn't use exactly the same words. I used words, synonyms, so words which sound, uh, which mean the same thing, but are a different word. So this is what I did. I said, we will try to approach this burning issue from several angles and prove that social media is actually not good for society. There are two things that I'm doing over here. I didn't say we will try to approach this motion or this topic. I said burning issue, which, uh, which should imply that it's a very complex and contemporary issue that everyone is talking about and things are not as black and white as people might think. And then I said, and prove 
to show how confident we are. I didn't say, and maybe you will see why. No, I said, we will prove that social media is actually not good for society because if I'm confident in what I'm saying, I, it will be much easier for me to persuade the judge as well. Then I, I did the team split, as I said, with synonyms, with uh, paraphrase. And I said, I will focus mostly on the deliberate misuse of social media. Our second speaker will focus on the effects on, um, of the inter on the interpersonal skills. The third speaker will point out the negative habits brought about by social media. And our fourth and final speaker will speak about the effects on the mental health. So the reason why I did this is to show that we have taken this topic very seriously uh, and that we will go very deep. Uh, also, it, uh, it is very beneficial for the topic development because now the judge knows what to expect. And we as people always feel nice when our predictions come true. You feel nice about it, like, ha, 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 okay. I, I knew that was going to happen. But when it happens in a normal situation, like in everyday school environment, don't you do that with your friends? Aren't you like, I told you, I knew it. So this is what you give. It's like a gift for the judge. You, you, you tell them, this is what we will talk about. Prepare your mind. And he does, or she does. Then uh, I didn't want to just straight ahead, uh, to start straight ahead with my argument. So I wanted to give some introduction. This is why I like the first role. It gives you uh, an opportunity to uh, give direction to the whole debate. So I, I, this is what I, what I did. When we did research preparing for the debate and we went through some statistics, it turns out that 3 billion people, around 40% of the world's population use online social media. And I think one common misconception is that social media can have a negative effect only on children. It affects everyone. Why did I um, say this? Uh, the, the students team being comprised only of students, my initial idea was that they were going to mention only uh, examples referring to children or teenagers. So I just wanted to give it uh, to, to make it a bit broader. Uh, so it involves a lot of other people. And uh, I suggested how serious this issue is because 40 percent of the entire world population uses uh, social media. Then I, uh, I was leading to my, to my first argument. And I said, the problem with social media is that it gives room for anonymity. And anonymity gives you courage. Uh, I wanted to, uh, to engage the listener even more. So I used a personal example there. Because I know it's for, from my personal, uh, from my life. Uh, I'm usually a very calm and collected person. But when I get in, in, in my car, I turn into a completely different person. I turn in, it's like a Jekyll Hyde situation. Um, usually, I want to establish good communication with people. But once I'm in my car, I, you know, I, I curse at people just for cutting, my, uh, cutting me out or something. Like, hey, how dare you do that? You, you know, you, you get the point. Um, so I, I, I used the personal example and asked everyone to think about this. If you don't believe me, just go through your chat log from the last video game you've played and think whether you'd say those things in someone's face. Because we all know when people rage in video games, they, they drop F-bombs, they, they say things that they shouldn't say. Would you do those things if you were standing in front of the person? Absolutely not. So this was my introduction which is going to translate to everything that the other teammates are going to talk about as well. Because uh, this will be relevant to what teacher Tsvetanka, teacher Senada, and teacher Gordana are going to say. Then I, I, uh, I follow up with this lead me to my first argument, which is cyberbullying. I wanted to, to state the, the word first argument so the judge knows that I have started with that part. I don't, uh, I, I, I'm making it uh, really easy for the judge or for the judges in, in, in this case. So this is the argument. Uh, bullying existed before cyberbullying, but it was only possible face to face. Now it's possible for people to torment and bully others. Uh, and look at these words, torment. It's not a simple word. It's not a, a word that you, that you hear in uh, every day. So like before, like with the word control, it's emotionally charged. It, 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 it draws you to my side. You're like, ooh, torment. Yes, they do that. They're bad people. They shouldn't do it. I'll, I'll trust teacher Nicole. Uh, and I continued by saying, I think we are all aware that cyberbullying is a very common problem. 
And it turns out that 25% of teens worldwide are bullied and 43% are bullied online, which means that the percentage has been doubled. So here, this phrase, we are all aware. We are not all aware. I just wanted everyone to think that. By doing that, I'm telling the judge, you and I are on the same team. We know this, we are smart, are we not? And he, he would always agree. You can say this for, for anything. You could say, I think we, all, uh, we are all aware that uh, social media is good for society. I think we're all aware that social media is not good for society. I think we're all aware that zoos should be banned. It makes the others feel connected to what you're saying. So you draw them closer. Um, and uh, in the argument, I use statistics, which is what you, uh, in general, what you need to do. The arguments need to be really neutral and they should be uh, based on logic and numbers. That's why I use the numbers. I, I said that 25% uh, of teenagers who were bullied worldwide increased to 43%. And there are certain people who are not good with numbers, like, like myself. Uh, so I wanted to make it even stronger by implying uh, that the percentage had been doubled. This is a very powerful technique that you can use to your advantage. Uh, because the moment I said this, which means that the percentage has been doubled, I'm sure that the audience and the judge imagined a pie chart. And because I say double, they imagine it like half and half. A half of it is colored in what I'm what I'm trying to say uh, because let's say that if we're if we're talking about economy right if we say that our economy uh, was uh, had an increase from two to four percent two percent doesn't seem like much but if you say our economy has doubled suddenly it feels much more persuasive then I, uh, I started working on my example uh, this is the example uh, I tried to balance things out. Uh, in the argument, I used neutral things uh, based on statistics. And in the example, I decided to go with something practical, something that, that everyone would understand. So I said, so these bullies use the anonymity that social networks give them and use people's trust and then belittle them in front of their peers. For instance, suggesting that I started the example, they might take someone's photo from their mutual group, then use it to embarrass them online you never know where the photo will end up. Everyone would be able to imagine this. Uh, no matter how bad you are at English, you, would, you understand these words. They are very simple. Um, and I strengthen that by saying, these online attacks create an intimidating, threatening, hostile educational environment for the student. Education environment. It should say education environment. Um, so these words, intimidating, threatening, hostile, very powerful words um, and um, it's uh, what follows is not only do they disrupt the education process but could leave deep mental scars now when i was talking to some of the good debaters uh, uh, there was a friend who, who watched the video and he suggested that he said oh but uh, in that example didn't you use the emotional appeal don't you don't you think that what you did was wrong uh, and i didn't really think about that that way I, I wasn't planning to use the emotional appeal. If I were to use the emotional appeal, it would have been much more direct. I would say, imagine your son, your daughter, or family member being uh, cornered just because they are not cool enough, blah, blah, blah. Uh, however, I understand why they would say that. Uh, it's because of how effective the language is. Now, this is the part that I'm most proud of. Uh, I wrote an inversion. You know that English follows a very strict word order. It's always subject, verb, object. However, there are certain exceptions where you can change the word order to emphasize the things that you want to emphasize, to highlight. So here I wrote, how could they not result in that? I'm not saying, and of course, all of them, all of these things result in, which is quite a neutral, basic sentence. I said, how could they not result in that? This is something that we haven't studied during our lessons. It's something that may, we may have a look at uh, later. Um, the other thing about this phrase is that it works like a rhetorical question. It's like a question. How could they not? As if I'm waiting for an answer. But I answer it myself. And I use the rule of three over here. Um, I, I, I pressed enter. So I've separated the three phrases. 
so uh, it's uh, visually clear for you. Um, and I said, when someone infiltrates their mind, when someone infests their mind, when someone infects their mind. When we talked about the rule of three, I explained that we people crave patterns and we, we, we want to uh, we want our predictions to be true. So when I said these phrases for the first time, the judge immediately knew that there was going to be a similar sentence to, to just wrap up the whole sequence. And there's a nice rhythm. Um, I, I, was, I, I did an extra thing over here uh, because all these three words, infiltrates, infests, and infects, start with the same three letters. Um, uh, it started as a coincidence because when I was preparing my speech, I found ju just these two words, infiltrates and infests, and then I knew that it would have been, it would be much more effective if I managed to find another one. So I did. Then um, I continue explaining the situation uh, by they could be trolled based on their racial, religious, or social background, or simply because they decided they weren't cool enough. Uh, I. Uh, I knew that uh, the opponents would try to challenge what I said, so I, I, I had a take on a pre-buttal, not a rebuttal, a pre-buttal, uh, trying to defend myself before they say anything, um, uh, on, by, on, uh, before they say anything. Um, and this is what I said. Information and communication technology has changed rapidly over the past 20 years. And I don't think parents are able to keep pace and there's, there's nothing they can do to help their children from drowning in the sea of sorrow. Uh, I have an explanation for this as well. Uh, they will not, the opponents would not be able to refute this. It's, it's not that, that they can say, no, technology hasn't uh, uh, improved uh, during the past 20 years. It's a fact, everyone knows that. But I just wanted to state it even more so there's no doubt about it. Uh, and I used the thing with the parents to say that to build in the to build the, the pre bottle because it was very logical that they would say yes there are there are certain disadvantages of social media but all of them can be controlled by parents because if they um, if they introduce screen time or if they download special applications they will be able to control you blah blah blah. I knew that they were going to say that. And I wanted to, to suggest that not everyone would be able to do that. My parents wouldn't be able to do that. They're not very good at technology. How would they limit my screen time? Um, and this phrase over here, which is a bit, uh, I agree, drowning in the sea of sorrow. Uh, the reason why I put it there is to balance the, uh, the formal aspect of this. This is like a, a sentence from a report like you've been reading an article, a magazine article. So I wanted to end up on a high note by using something, uh, something artistic, uh, drowning in the sea of sorrow. Last Friday, we had a lesson about this. However, I didn't record it because uh, I, was, I was exhausted and I was stuttering a lot, so I didn't feel like uh, the, uh, the lesson was high quality. Um, and it's something that I will record this weekend. So I'll break the time-space continuum and I'll go back to space and, and time, I will record it, and that video will be posted before this one. So in order to keep the, uh, the, 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 the right uh, trajectory of the lessons. Uh, this sentence over here, drowning in the sea of sorrow, has been taken from a song. Uh, there is a band, let me find it. Uh, it's called uh, Alice in Chains, and they have, uh, they have this song called Sea of Sorrow. Uh, it connects really well. So I just went to the lyrics and I took the, took the, 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 the whole sentence from the lyrics. I uh, stole it and I put it in my speech. No one noticed and no one would have if I hadn't told you about it. But it gives this nice artistic feeling about my speech. Uh, it's not just facts and statistics. It, it makes it elevates it a bit more. And then I went with my um, with my pre -buttle because this, could, this was like an introduction to the pre -bottle. This is the actual pre -bottle. I said, the other team may say, so I'm predicting, I'm anticipating what they would say. The other team may say that you could prevent all of that by blocking the cyberbullies, social media, email, but let's be honest, you could go live in a cave 
Why did I say this part? You could go live in a cave for such an important issue. It's because it works like a joke. And uh, when you say it, it's something that everyone can imagine visually. So the judge would imagine himself, not himself, people around him, like entering a cave like with a, with a big club on their shoulder, ooga booga, zoga booga. And uh, it, it, so it just attracts, it draws his attention. And um, I finished by saying, you could go live in a cave and things wouldn't change unless we all act together, which would take ages to accomplish. So again, I agree with the opponents that it, there's, there needs to be something, uh, something needs to be done about this issue, but this is not the right time. So at the moment, in the contemporary, in the modern society, social media is not good for society. Maybe in the future it will be, but everyone will have to work together. Uh, and here, I realized that I was running out of time because I had prepared another argument. The second argument was focused on fake news and how people from Willis uh, managed to help uh, Americans choose Donald Trump to vote for him for president uh, because they had uh, created 100 uh, websites uh, with sensationalist news, like the Pope should, uh, will vote for, for, for Trump or something like that. So uh, realizing that I didn't have enough time, I, I wrapped up my speech by saying, of course, there are other examples of misuse of social media, but I think this is the most apparent one. Thank you very much. So uh, all in all, I'm very happy with how I did, uh, because in terms of the content, I have really good arguments and examples, and uh, they have been grouped in a logical way. In terms of the, in terms of the structure, Again, I have arguments, examples. I have topic development. I have um, I have some of the of the techniques that you need to use to persuade people. The rule of three, inversions, emotional appeal. I have the artistic touch over there. I have the rebuttal, pre-rebuttal. So and uh, emotionally charged vocabulary. So all of these things, when you when you combine them together, you get something something really nice. Um, right. Okay. So what do you think? Uh, when I was reading the and when I was explaining the speech, were you able to recognize all of these things? Would you be able to do something like this? Someone? I suppose I could like after like uh, because you showed us how like we should do it. So I suppose I can get something out of it. I suppose. Good. Yeah, I suppose that we can use more time on things that we didn't know. If we like don't mm -hmm. have like we don't think of anything else, we can use these, and we will have enough time for everything. Um, absolutely, but Rosina, there's one thing that you have to bear in mind. You're just fifth grade, fifth grade. Mm -hmm. there, there's and you have so much potential. When you come to be seven, eighth, ninth grade, you'll be a beast. I promise you. So these are all things that you should just uh, recognize. You should be careful about them. So if someone uses this in a debate, you need to know how to counter it and so on and so on. Yeah. What about the others? Any questions? No questions. Sara, did you like it? What do you think? I liked it. What it do you, was very good. What do you like um, the most about it? There's an everything i don't really have a specific part everything was perfect i really like the rule of three i was very proud of it when i when i when i thought of it you know i called my girlfriend i said look come look what i'm going to use to, to crush the students but actually the students i i think the students won at the end um uh, i was happy it was, it was very unclear who won it was it was because of the statistics because of the way uh the questions were were asked and worded in general, um, I want you to, so to go to, just a second. Uh, so I, I will upload this video as well on the on the um, on the channel. Uh, I will share all the videos with my colleagues, the English teachers, and you'll be able to, to find them. Uh, watch the videos starting from the first one until the last one, but pay a lot of attention to this one because this is like an overview of what you should do in a debate individually. This is not uh, about how you need to work as a team, slightly, maybe, uh, but this is what your personal speech should look like.
if you want to get all the points. Please the send the link of the debate in the chat and can I share it with friends? Absolutely, sure. Uh, okay. it's a it's educational content so uh, i'd like I to share it with my teammate because she didn't show up this class absolutely here uh, i'm posting it in the in the chat over there you can you can take it from uh from the chat box and just uh, save it somewhere um it was a very enjoyable event and i hope that we'll be able to organize one more um i don't think we'll have enough time this year maybe at the beginning of next year but this is something that I like to continue doing. I think that there should be at least two debates um, every year, one, one in the first semester, one in the second semester. Uh, it's really enjoyable and it's very educational for me as well to see what the students think and how much you've improved. Uh, because when we were debating, I could see the faces of the debaters. They were waiting for me to say something so they could use it back and front. It was quite enjoyable. And uh, I hope you're motivated for the Scholars Cup because we have only like two or three weeks to go. Uh, we should crush the all the opponents. So I hope you you'll go to. Yeah, I have a question and, about uh, the Scholars Cup. Yes. So yeah. when you told when you told us which JC was gonna be, so it's 14, 15, and 16 June, right? Yes. For all of us, or all of you. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's about it. We have less than a minute. There's no point in continuing with okay. one more lesson. Bye. This was clear, clear enough. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, teacher. Have a nice weekend. Bye,